guys, what's up? Sherry here from No Effects Giving Crew. Gemini, welcome to your April reading. So I love Gemini. They are always a lot of fun to be around. They want to live life to the fullest and experience everything. Um, they're artists as well, so they're very inspiring. Um, love to communicate. You know, but at the same time, the other side of Gemini is you can become very seriously serious very suddenly. So I'm going to use different decks here. We're doing the Twin Flame reading. It's going to be an extended version. Um, so the first deck I'm using is the John Holland Psychic Tarot. Um, the next deck is the John Holland Psychic Tarot of the Heart. So I'll pull the cards first and then we'll go through the positions. Um, yeah, let's, let's skip over to the Dorian Virtue for the near future. So although you guys, you know, you, um, you like to flirt, you like to have fun, but when you find the right one, you're committed, faithful, loyal to them. That's what I love about you guys. Okay, so that was Dorian Virtue, um, Archangel, Tarot. And this is, call it Baron Reed, um, Wisdom of the Oracle. We'll use the enchanted map for the energy um, that each of you are bringing into the union. And also a fairy by Lenormand for the foundation and crowning. And we'll pull one card from my deck over here, the large deck for the heart-centered energy. All right, and for the Osho Zen card, uh, will be from the you know the overall energy bottom of the deck. Stop already, okay. All right, um, so now we will also um, give my little deck here a shuffle because I'll be pulling a past, present, and future card. So I have the other little deck that I'll use for the masculine side. All right, so let's begin with the overall energy so the Zen Osho Zen card is perspective shift so new vision so the overall energy for the month of April is going to be this shift in perspective very high energy like illuminating energy um, let me just read it for you I can't do that card justice so sorry about that my camera ran out of battery um, okay so it stopped at a good place anyway okay so I was just starting to read this card so I'll start again okay so the figure on this card is being born anew emerging from the earthbound roots and growing wings to fly into the unbounded the ge geometric shapes around the body of the figure show the many dimensions of life simultaneously 
available to him. The square represents the physical, the manifest, the known. The circle represents the unmanifest, the spirit, pure space. And the triangle symbolizes the threshold nature of the universe, un manifest, unmanifest, in the human being who contains both. Now you are presented with the, an opportunity to see life in all of its dimensions, from the depths to the heights. They exist together. And we, when we come to know from experience that the dark and the difficult are needed as much as the light, um, and sorry, as much as the light and easy, <laughs> doesn't make sense. Let me try that again. Um, they exist together. And when we come to know from experience that the dark and the difficult are needed as much as the light and the easy, okay, sorry. Um, then we begin to have a very different perspective on the world. See, I just had a little perspective shift. I thought it was dark and difficult. I couldn't read that sentence. Oh my God. And plus the freaking camera shut off. So it's like these dark forces are working against me. No, it's all a matter of perspective. By allowing all of life's colors to penetrate us, we become more integrated. Yes. Hell yeah. For sure. That is a beautiful card. So the hangman is surrendering, letting go of control. If you look at this card here, uh, there's a shadow of a figure that's kind of crawling along the ground, right? So the focus is on the lack. And then here we have a figure who's empowered um, by the ability to surrender and see things differently. You know, there's all sides of this being is being represented in harmony very nice energy to begin for the month of april i gotta say okay so um where should we begin i want to try and um, do things a little differently you know what okay so the union energy wants to be known over here all right so the masculine is bringing in heal the ouch so let's read that Whoops, Daisy, sorry about that. Okay. Heal the ouch. Forgiveness in is the healer of the soul. This is a time for great soothing of the heart, body, soul, and mind. As this card indicates that healing will be prevalent in your life now if you feel drawn to study the healing arts you'll be successful in developing your natural capacity to restore others to wellness however the message may be that you're being called to change your behavior in order to heal the earth perhaps you'll switch to a cruelty free diet eating less meat or perhaps you'll pay more attention to how much water or electricity you use you're asked to be conscious of your footprint on the sacred earth and all of life and to commit to the healing arts or to healing path. The Heal the Ouch card may also be an indicator of old wounds and broken bonds being mended. Reconciliation are possible now. Let bygones be got bygones. Very nice. So what I'm feeling here is the masculine is bringing this energy into the union. So he's offering this you know, um, help. He's offering, um, you know, to open himself up, to connect, to mend those broken bonds. Okay, so let's pull three cards. You know what, I'll just give it a quick shuffle. Okay. Strength card, the Eight of Wands, and the Judgment. So the Strength card, past position, similar energy to what's being represented here. So the Strength card is a gentle, nurturing, kind energy. You're, you are being compassionate, empathetic, 
allowing space for people to express themselves, to be heard. So this, you know, taming that beast within is, has created that environment for healing. The Eight of Wands in the present position. So this is the masculine energy, what he's bringing into the union. So Eight of Wands is an, an accelerated energy. It's very enthusiastic. Um, it is driven. It's like stepping on the gas pedal because they see the finish line. But it's also communication, texting, Cupid's arrows. So the, the masculine, in terms of the union, is not only sending out healing vibration, but also this beautiful, vibrant, energetic energy. Very uplifting. Um, so this is taking him into uh, the judgment card. So again, the judgment card is another illuminating card. It is hearing the calling. So realizing everything has been an illusion that you know your life is that movie projected in the screen in your own mind so you create your own reality so you can change the plot and the characters if you so desire so there's this movement from high vibration from introversion to high vibration to um to realization illumination right so there is going to be a judgment call in the future for the masculine He's being drawn to heal and he's being drawn to move towards this, this spiritual awakening, right? This is the Grand Awakening card. Get in there. What the heck? <laughs> Sorry. All right. <laughs> okay, it doesn't want to stay in there. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, so let's move on to the feminine side. So what is she bringing into the union? Details, details. So this card, to me, it's, it's you know, making small gestures. Letting somebody know that they're, they're thought of, that they matter. Um, but it's also looking for an answer. Um, sifting through the details rather than you know, just skimming over things, not really paying attention to things. So this is what she's bringing into the union. It's almost like an observation kind of feeling to me. So it says, the most powerful patterns are created within the tiniest details. Pay attention. So there we go. Paying attention. Looking at things under a magnifying glass. Looking for clarity. Okay. So... This is a time to be aware of the fine print in all areas of your life. Look at the details and leave the broad strokes for another time. When this card appears in a reading, it's a sign to finesse a project, make small but meaningful gestures, or add a personal touch to your correspondence. Be aware that what you need to know lies in the details. If you're entering into an agreement of any kind, pay attention to them before and not after when it's too late. Clarity and transparency are key. You can gain great understanding by observing the minute body language, offhand remarks, and fleeting facial expressions that reveal the larger picture. So, like I said, you're in this observation. There's a desire to heal over on the masculine side, but there's um, awareness on the, on the feminine side. So let's see what that's about. The King of Fire, the Four of Swords, and the Knight of Pentacles. So the King of Fire, uh, this is a fire sign. Um, so it's coming in the past. So it could represent the masculine energy, and it could also represent the feminine. So let me see here. The King of Fire is somebody who is explosive, they're dynamic, they're the leader of a revolution. They're very charismatic, inspiring people. So they are unchained, right? There's no stopping them. Now remember, the overall energy is perspective shift. So we have, we can definitely see that awakening and perspective shift over here with the, the Grand Awakening card. 
and we can also see it on this side. So, you know, the king is uncontrollable. He is a powerhouse. Then we have a four swords, which is rest, uh, rejuvenation, healing the heart after a three of swords has taken place. So the feminine has, you know, what I feel here is that the feminine was the one that probably felt that pain of the three of swords. And so she retreated in order to heal herself. And in the future, we have this opposite energy from the king of fire, which is just, you know, let's go change the world kind of energy to, you know, this very slow moving tight wire rope person who has, you know, planned out their entire life and they will arrive at their destination. So they're, you know, that explosive energy tames itself because of healing that has taken place. So healing of the heart and healing. Um, so there's mirroring happening here. So this slowing down with the Knight of Pentacles you know, would be somebody who would sift through the details, looking for um, clarity about something. So this could be looking for clarity about the heartbreak. You know, this masculine here could be a fire sign or the divine masculine, you know, caused some type of heartbreak. But you healed those wounds and you're moving forward in the future, right? But there's... A feeling of detachment here you know um, you're still kind of licking the wounds in a in a way okay so what's in the past position so I want to know what happened here heart chakra Wow huh now, I was expecting the Three of Swords, like, right off the bat. Show me pain. Show me betrayal. But no, we got the Heart Chakra in its full glory here. So let's see what else. The High Priestess, nice. Okay, the Queen of Swords and the Sacral Chakra. Okay, so High Priestess. Highly intuitive person. Could be a water energy. Um, what I see here is the feminine, though, is highly intuitive, uh, uses her intuition to guide her. She has foresight, so she picks up on the senses of people. So there's this turn from intuitive, right? She, you know, she's somebody like a tarot card reader who is intuitive to help people. You know, there's a sense of doing it to help, to guide. Uh, so from that energy of gentle, gentleness and intuitiveness, it, it's like a hard rock, cold stare. Um, you know, this is the ice queen. This is somebody who has cut themselves off emotionally. And you can see that blockage happening in the future. Right? The queen of swords, um, she's ruled by air first and then water. So the mind is in charge here. So she sees through bullshit. She doesn't take shit from anybody. All right. So something happened to, you know, where she was growing spiritually, had her heart wide open and then was triggered. So it could be a cutting com conversation, you know, um, or just realizing a truth about a situation. Here you're seeking the truth. Here the truth is known. Okay, there's still an emotional level here, right? She, she's doing this for your own good. She's saying this for your own good. That kind of feeling. So, um, and it could be air sign. Uh, I said that a couple times today, <laughs> didn't I? Sorry. Okay, so um, the future position is the sacral chakra. So this is where your emotions are stored. And usually when these lower three chakras show up it means there's a blockage there so we regress in the future from the four to the two right there's this regression um the high priestess is emotion she's somebody who is emotionally balanced 
and it moves into somebody who shuts themselves off emotionally. But overall, the heart chakra is still there as a major energy. Uh, I just see this as a, a test of some kind. Because the high priestess, she, you know, she's basically all-knowing, right? It's a subconscious mind. Um, this is very spiritual energy. That spirituality, that power will always rule, right, over the mind. You'll have your moments, uh, but then you, you find your balance once again, in, once you go within, once you find that peace and solitude within yourself. Okay, so the past position for the masculine destiny. Now, what struck me right away is that the heart chakra is open here. So, you know, there's many directions uh, that this person can take, but she actually exists at the center, very similar to the fool. However, you know, destiny is just surrendering, realizing that, um, you know, you have a purpose and that everything happens for a reason, right? So this is good luck and good fortune coming back to you. So it's a 10, it reduces to one, so it's completion. Okay, so the Nine of Swords, nice, wow, major shift there, eh? The Fool card and uh, the Eight of Swords. Okay, well, <laughs> this shows karmic energy, like, you know, what goes around comes around. There's a cycle that is being repeated here. You know, you let yourself out of a prison and then you, you put yourself right back in again. So the Nine of Swords is nightmares, night terrors, inability to sleep, you're worried, you feel guilty, you can't stop thinking, consumed by thought. And so it's a nine, okay? So you're nearing the completion of that. And then, wow, the Fool card, Major Arcana, uh, you begin this new life. You start from zero, free of attachment, free of expectation. You take a leap of faith, and then, boom, right back into the slammer again, right? So this is a self-imposed prison of the mind. It's the Eight of Swords, regression. And then, then it goes from the eight to the nine again, back to the fool over and over again. So you hold the key to releasing yourself from that state. But somebody or something won't let you stop thinking about it. Because this is an oppressive energy from the outside, the eight of swords. But you are the one that believes it, right? So that's why you're, you're caught in that cycle. So just one moment. Oh my gosh, so sorry about the, the other, another interruption. Um, okay, so let me give them a quick shuffle again. Usually I can go right through the reading nonstop, but uh, yeah, uh, but Mercury rec retrograde as well, right? So I'm having a hard time talking, um, but also, you know, there's glitches in the matrix, if you will. So, the, um, you know, usually cameras stop working, you know, just weird things. Anyway, let's carry on. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're going to come out of that cycle, hopefully. So, the present position for the feminine. Wow, four of wands, that's awesome. Joy and stability, so this is confirmation of a twin flame connection. So, the heart chakra keeping that heart chakra open even though you may have been triggered you're creating joy in your life and stability in your life no matter what happens in the external world you have picked yourself back up dusted yourself off and you've made a commitment to yourself is what I feel here now you know this could be the fact that your twin flame is um, near and, you know, um, he may be giving you this sense of commitment so you feel, um, you feel hopeful about the future because there's just stability, right? My card, I have a fire crackling. So it's the two of you sitting in front of the fire, enjoying each other's company, looking forward to the future, celebrating your union. Okay, so... The Seven of Cups, 
Seven of Swords and the Universe. Wow. Okay, so the Seven of Cups past position. So, you know, this points to confusion. Having a lot of options, don't know which one to choose. It could also mean that you know what you want, you don't know how to get there. So there was a sense of confusion for a little while. It's like a little hiccup, but it wasn't quite resolved, and you're still kind of resolving it in the present position with the Seven of Swords. So we got two Sevens there. Um, so the Seven of Swords is not trusting somebody. And so there we go. That feeling of not trusting, of closing off your emotional... Um, your emotions basically right so where you were emotional we got the cups it's turned into mental with the sword cool synchronicity so the future position though and this is why that four of wands is making itself so known you know prominent in the present position um, is because of the universe card in the future so the universe card is the end of the fool's journey Okay, so over here we have the beginning of the Fool's journey on the masculine side with the Fool, and then the end of it. So this could represent the end of a cycle from 20 years up to a lifetime. So the, the final piece of the puzzle is about to be placed. So where there was confusion and doubt, mistrust, feeling like you're going to be betrayed, then there's illumination, a shift in perspective. Where there is darkness, there is light. All right, so the masculine's present position. Wow, release. So this would be the death card. So it's transformation, metamorphosis. I love that a masculine's being represented here. So this is the ego falling away. The ego, your old identity. Um, a rebirth, release in the present moment. That's so beautiful. And it's being felt over on the side. Can you see the vibrant, sparkly awesomeness? You know, and perhaps it's the feminine that is shining her heart and that it's allowing the masculine to open up, release, and heal himself. Feel that healing vibration. And again, you see that heart chakra energy, right? Very similar images. Healing. Awesome. Okay, so three cards. The Chariot, the Two of Cups, and the Destiny card. So two major arcanas, and then we have the Two of Cups in the middle. That's beautiful. I, I always like to see this card as a major arcana because it's spiritual union. It's recognizing your twin flame and having a deep, deep love for that person. And as a result, it create it it creates this transformation, right? It's a rebirth from the ego, and it's you know that heart chakra act, acts like a motor that drives consciousness to higher levels, and we can see that drive with the chariot, um, reaching higher levels, you know, with the destiny card, and it's all because of true love. So the past position chariot. So. This is water energy, right? So it's emotional. And it's movement towards the Two of Cups, which is spiritual union. So the chariot is getting control of your life, taking control of those reins and directing your energy towards your goal, overcoming obstacles and challenges. So it's a very extroverted energy, going forward towards this love, doing the things that make you happy. And isn't that what Gemini is? They are all about the surfing, right? They want to experience life. So in the future position, destiny goes around, comes around. So there's destiny here in the past. Destiny coming in the future. So this destiny is causing a transformation from darkness to love and, and spiritual connection. So rebirth. Oh. Beautiful. So you're coming out of that prison. So destiny card, good luck, good fortune, good karma. 
you feel destined as well and that is what's helping you to release the past your old life your old identity okay so what's in the near future for the feminine page of wands so the page is energetic, brave, optimistic, playful. So it says, follow your passion. You're ready for any challenge, opportunities for excitement and adventure. So look at that guy standing there with his wand. He's so excited to take that step. So this card is very similar to the fool. However, you know, the fool has no expect, ex ah, can't talk, no expectations, but the page has a vision. And so it's a very youthful energy, very excited energy. They're excited about this adventure. They can't wait to get started. Where the Fool card is all about taking a leap of faith, trusting in destiny. And that's what's driving the masculine is destiny. Okay, so three cards. Transformation, the King of Water, and the Two of Swords. So transformation card, same card coming in from the past. So the feminine sheds the ego just as the masculine. So there's mirroring here. The king of water um, could represent a water sign, but this is masculine energy that is felt by the feminine. Transformation is also water. So we've got water immersed in water and movement into swords, mental, once again. So the king of cups is both air and water, right? But he's ruled more by the emotion. But the cool thing about this king is that he's the reverse energy of this queen, yet they represent the same elements, right? So this is somebody who is emotionally balanced who gives of themse themselves emotionally. So this blockage is released with the death card. But it leads to a feeling of not going anywhere, being stuck at the crossroads, always be exci being excited to take that adventure, right? So the two swords having two choices and the inability to make that choice keeps you feeling stuck but at the same time that emotional blockage is released okay so while the emotional blockage is released you're still too much in the mind but you've let go you've let go of, of attachments you've been reborn both sides have been rebor reborn Okay, so the near future for the masculine, nine of pentacles. Your dreams are fulfilled. Hard work leads to great success. A love for beautiful things in life. So the nine of pentacles, um, feeling like you've completed or nearing the completion of a major accomplishment, right? This is abundance flowing in. Having enough to splurge a little, go on vacations. It's independence. Uh, freedom because of your hard work but it's also a self-love card so after all that hard work there's a sense of a foundation being laid and a sense of achievement accomplishment harvest you're ready to settle down um, the the fruit is ready to harvest basically six of Pentacles four of swords Nice, the Knight of Cups. Six of Pentacles, past position. We have growth from the six to the nine. So the six is being open. So what I'm seeing here is the law of giving and receiving. Because you're open and generous in the past, it brings you this feeling of independence, freedom, uh, harvest, completion. So the Six of Swords is receptivity. Um, being receptive in a, in a relationship, being open, giving as much as of yourself as you are receiving. And when that happens, you create this flow of abundance in your life. And here's that, that abundance coming back to you. 
Now we have the Four of Swords in the present position. So the Four of Swords is in the present position over here for the feminine. So, you know, this is rest, relaxation, retreat, healing the heart. So the heart is still healing. But what I'm seeing here is not really, I, th I see more of a reflection, a moment of contemplation before there's movement forward again. So the Four of Swords, you know, is healing still taking place, but it's more of a thought than of somebody's heart being broken because we see that release, we see that rebirth, and it's because of love. Okay, so the Knight of Cups is in the future, so forward movement, you are offering your love to somebody, somebody you've been thinking about, you know, somebody who you want to share your life with, you feel like you're ready for a commitment. Okay, so we get movement forward. And so let's leave the final outcome for later. So the union shared energy. So this is the foundation shared between the two. Interesting. There's that book again. Um, I think Pisces or Aquarius, I can't remember, but one of those two readings, the, these books kept on showing up. So here we have that book, you know, looking for knowledge, um, seeking the truth of something, sifting through the details. So I'm just going to look at the book real quick here. So number 26. Okay, so knowledge. Um, knowledge may be gained within or without. Light of clarity and preservation. Preservation. <laughs> sorry. Um, it can mean that the infor information required is easily found and shared. So secret knowledge learning. Okay, clarity, sifting through the details. Wow. So one card for the feminine. Wow, well, page of wands again. Masculine, seven of swords. Okay, so the page of wands, same card that's coming in the near future. So you're ready for this new adventure. You're still excited about it. <laughs> it's really kind of funny to look at their faces. Look how freaking excited they are. You know, and it's because they're in the presence of a Gemini. Gemini is fun to be around, right? They're always ready for a new adventure. But on the other hand, Gemini is like the Seven of Swords. Suddenly they're serious. They're in the mind. They're thinking about thoughts, right? So this is the same card that's coming in the present position with the Four of Wands on the feminine side. So the feminine I see, there's... A search for knowledge there has been wisdom gained but the search continues okay the masculine is discovering those answers and so is the feminine she's discovered those answers but she's waiting for an answer actually sorry she's waiting for an answer she's waiting for that beginning and that final piece will be placed so she is hopeful where she was cute, confused in the past, she's now really holding on to that excitement. Cycles, perspective shifts, constantly shifting from the negative to the positive. Triggers, and that's what twin flame connections do. They trigger each other. You can see that energy being pulled or being played out fully in this reading. Okay, so what's at the uh, ooh. Let's actually do the crowning energy. What's the crowning? There you go. Seeking those answers. Beginning this adventure. Um, cool synchronicity. That Knight of Pentacles taking it one step at a time. Being careful. You know, there a lot of guilt is coming from the past. Right, so you don't want to make those same mistakes again. 
So the ship is adventure, is about your purpose and the process you will go through to fulfill your true destiny, it is where your investment in, of time, energy, or money will manifest. So travel, rest, or risk, and speculation. So this is the crowning energy. This is what both aspects desire, is to begin that new adventure, <laughs> you know, holding that light in your hand, that fire, helping it, you know, allowing it to guide you. So perspective, movement from the dark to the light. So one card for the feminine, the devil, and the three of cups. So the masculine, this card is all about love, creating love, being around people, falling in love with one another and celebrating that love. So it's like a wedding. It's like um, a party, right? A party for a person, a party to get together with your friends, you know, but it, it is union energy. So he wants an adventure. He wants to celebrate life. And that's exactly what Gemini's do. Okay. Flip side. We have the ego, okay, being controlled by the ego, a chain, a codependent relationship, an addiction, something chaining the feminine. Um, she wants to be free of that chain. She wants to be free of the ego. And she wants to begin that adventure. She wants excitement. So I'm going to pull a further clarifier for that ego card to see what that's about. there too okay so I have a little deck here so what do you mean by the ego it's real so that questioning is it real is it an illusion is it a fantasy can I trust that's the ego that's what's being put to an end with the death card all right, so she's really struggling with the ego. And she must because she's standing there waiting for this new adventure to happen. Okay, so let's go to the heart. Yang, Divine Masculine is at the heart of the reading. So the Divine Masculine, power, confidence. He, he's the protector, the, the father figure. Right, so there's this strong, independent, powerful energy who derives his power from being authentic. So this card shines authenticity. So it's the heart of the matter on each side. It then, and that's a true twin flame, right? It's, it's being the best of who you are. Um, and being with that person who brings out the best in you, your, your mirror reflection, your twin flame, right? And that's what transforms you. That's what, you know, you're being born anew into this authenticity and truth. Okay, one card for the feminine. Nice, there you go. There's the crackling fire. And the King of Wands. Okay, so that makes sense. So we have the King of Wands coming in the past position on the feminine side. So this, this uh, King over here represents the Divine Masculine. So this Masculine, this spiritual leader, this powerhouse of energy entered her life and created, you know chaos, um, heartbreak, caused her to retreat, but get back up, dust herself off and carry on. So she sees the, the, fe the masculine as fire, flame, her twin flame. But she's, you know, this doesn't have to be heartbreak. It, you know, it could just be waiting, resting, healing, while you're waiting because it's been a long journey. Okay. So it picks up speed in the future with the
the Knight of Cups. That's a little bit faster movement than the, the Knight of Pentacles. Anyway, so now the masculine is bringing in this King of Wands, this fire, this spiritual leader. So fire, 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 passion, twin, and she, she's reflecting the twin flame connection. Bam, you know, there's no question how she feels about the masculine. She knows he is her divine masculine. She feels like she has arrived. She's ready to commit to this long-term goal. She feels like that final piece of the puzzle is about to be placed, but she's at that crossroads with a big ass smile on her face. Okay, so this, these masculine energies, they are powerhouses. They take action. They see things through to the end. So for the month of April, the masculine is really coming into his divine power. Okay, um, so the final outcome for the feminine, yin, nice, yes, the embodiment of the yin energy, her true authentic self. Okay, so yin, the feminine principle of receptivity. Letting someone else make the first move. Gathering information and taking in cues. The art of conscious allowing. So there we go. Gathering of information and taking in cues. That's the exact same card as the details, details. Gathering information, the knight of pentacles. And taking action, movement forward. Right. So, okay, the relationship message. Let others take the lead right now. Your power lies in small gestures, again, the small gestures, soft awareness and conscious surrender. By yielding the reins, you will find yourself effortlessly moving closer to what you truly de desire. Permit others to tell you who they are and who they can be to you by allowing their actions to speak about them. You will be pleasantly surprised. So, you already know that though that's what i see you doing right um you are in a state of surrender three of swords <laughs> okay the bay chakra nice okay so three of swords confirmation yes your heart was broken in the past that's why you retreated with the four of swords that's why you're questioning you know, that's why you're kind of stuck at that crossroads. So, heartbreak. The base chakra is the lowest chakra. It's not feeling safe. Not feeling that you're being looked after or provided for. Um, you know, it's basic human needs aren't met. So these two cards together, that's painful energy to come out of. So I think you're just sh making your wounds known for some reason look i came from this painful place and i built myself up to the divine feminine okay and again it's showing that long journey and she needed to retreat in order to heal her her heart and the masculine is helping and vice versa you're helping each other to heal so after this period of inaction, so that you can heal yourself, um, you move into the chariot. So the chariot is action. So the chariot's coming in past position for the masculine. So again, there, there's that destiny, you know, what goes around, comes around. So again, this is movement and it's, it's very controlled, very directed. I'm going to pursue the things that make me happy. So she leaves the past behind. She moves on from that. Stops taking it slow, makes the decision, gets on that surfboard, off into the sunset. I'm going to do my thing. Okay, I'm not waiting for anyone 
anymore. I'm going to concentrate on me. Again, shift in perspective from dark, darkness, fear, to excitement in the future. So again, we're seeing that shift. All right, so the final outcome for the masculine, the tribe. Nice. So the Three of Cups is the Vibe Tribe as well. The Two of Cups represents that Vibe Tribe, your twin flame, your mirror reflection. So the Tribe. And again, Spiritual Leader. Okay. Community. Belonging, being seen and understood by others, like-minded connections, a sense of family and friendship, knowing your place in the world. Okay, so the relationship message. You're discovering the essential qualities that you share with another and perhaps also those you don't share. There are times when you follow and the other person leads and times when you lead and the other po person follows. Okay, so we've got that action, movement, inaction, and movement. So, the, you know, there's that push and pull back and forth. So the appearance of this card points to the importance of learning the proper dance between you and another. Accepting the truth that everyone has flaws is a part of that dance, yet you're all also being asked to be aware of the dynamics that you don't want to repeat. You are in the perfect place to make changes in order to experience the best version of who you can be together, right? Authenticity, who you can be together. Don't hold grudges, you know, help each other to grow and connect. So like-minded people, that's what Gemma and I love. They love to connect to like-minded people. They want to talk about the good stuff. Okay, so three cards, four of wands, the page of pentacles, whoa, and the temperance card. Oh my god. Okay, so four of wands, past position, twin flame connection, recognition of it, confirmation. So you were reflecting that energy. He picks up on it. Feels that he is, he's at home He's with his tribe, connectedness, connectedness, commitment. He senses that commitment. And so the, the twin flame connection awakens him to his true authentic self. Bam. The Page of Pentacles is a commitment card. So it is deciding that I'm going to start a new project, a new job, move to a different location, go back to school but it is making that decision and once the page makes that decision there's no changing this person so they make a com commitment double time here and here we have that knight of pentacles so we got the progression from the page knight in the future so there's a sense of them coming together to the both aspects coming together to fully manifest that ten of pentacles that uh you know oops one minute Seriously, another interruption. Knock on the door. Hearing that wake-up call. Okay, so double commitment here. You are you feel home and you're committed to something long term. Then we have the temperance card. So this is all about being in the now, being in this moment. And having balance in all areas of your life. Emotionally, spiritually, physically. And spiritually so you're in the now now this is also the ultimate union card for twin flames so we have manifestation commitment and manifestation of the ten of pentacles long term the four of wands is also manifestation of the twin flame connection into the 3d and then as a cherry on the top we got temperance union of the souls oh my god that's so beautiful all right, so let's pick um, two cards from Miss and Mermaids. So this will be the final message from the universe. 
What final messages do you have for Gemini? This one for the feminine. Stardust Angel, awesome. Illumination, oh, oh, oh my God, being divinely guided. Perfect for the masculine. Absinthe Mermaid. So, indulgence, addiction, codependency. So the message from the universe is to awaken from that. Okay, so number 22. Stardust Angel for the Feminine. Celestial Council of the Night, steer me soundly with your light. Steer me soundly with your light. Now that's why we see the light. The light here also. And the Four of Wands. Oh my gosh, a lot of synchronicities. So, Celestial Council of the Night, steer me soundly with your light. Navigate, instruct, advise, share your knowledge, make me wise. Enlighten me, help me decide, be my astral spirit guide. Yes. A dazzling beauty floats on the water, but her gaze is fixed towards the night sky. Her soulful eyes seek guidance from the heavens that are radiantly reflected in her hair. So the meaning is follow your guiding star. We all have someone in our lives that we look to as role model, somebody who can guide us in times of trouble or, un or uncertainty. Now is just such a time. It is your best in, in your best interest to turn to that person and to follow his or her example. Their wisdom, good sense, and strong moral compass are precisely what you need to get your life back on your preferred path. Okay, so divine guidance, I feel very strongly, right? So you're, you were off your path, and then you get back on your path. Okay, so the masculine is 26. Absent mermaid, languid, with barely the strength to lift my head, I indulge in more, my decadent drink, my viridian vice. I crave more, I succumb to more. I am, I am myself no more. A comatose green mermaid is draped in a toxic stream of bottles, skulls, and poisons. She is drugged and lethargic, a slave to her torpid addiction. She seems at risk of being washed away at a moment's notice. So the meaning is beware of dependency. Absinthe mermaid has wallowed in her addiction for too long. She has become languid. You have also spent too long immersed in the addiction or dependence. Addiction and dependence saps one's energy and robs one of vitality and strength. Something in your life, a substance, an obsession, or an unhealthy relationship is draining you of your life essence and you need to let it go. Seek advice from a trusted friend, a wise person in your community, or a professional to help you rid your unhealthy attachment before it's too late. Once you have escaped, reevaluate your life and take stock of your frailties. What led you down the path of addiction and dependence in the first place? What steps can you take to avoid stumbling down the rabbit hole again? Okay, so there's the rabbit hole down there constantly cycling through this addictive behavior, you know, and it could just be thinking is an addictive behavior. Okay, so you're being asked to let go of the past, let go of that chain that is holding you back and free yourself and reach out to people, to like-minded people, connect. So both of these cards are very similar in that you're asking to reach out and connect, to heal come together. All right, so I do hope this helps, and I am so very sorry about the interruptions, uh, and I'm sending you massive love. All right, cheers.